Hi guys, welcome to a new pastel tutorial here on my channel. So when I uploaded the time lapse of this dig dig drawing, I promised to do some tutorials out of it. So I'm going to do the background today. Um, this is going to be quite a long video, but I quite I took quite a long time for the background. So I try to reduce it as much as possible, but it's still going to be a half an hour tutorial. So I hope you'll enjoy. I'll be using soft pastels and pastel pencils for this. So for the very first layers, I'm using soft pastels from Koinor. I've got number seven, number two, and number 24. So I used the 48 set of pastels and I'll only be using these three from it. And I used the soft pastels only for the first layer, just to, uh, to put down the base layers a bit quick, a bit fast, if you use the pastel pencils only, which is also possible. Um, it takes a bit longer and you use up your pencils quite quickly, which will cost you more money in the end. So that's why I start with the soft pastels, just a few light layers, and then I will be able to add the pastel pencils on top and uh, do the details with those. So I start out by working from left to right. So I'm starting in the top left corner and I'm starting with the darkest green. So what I do is I just put down a very light layer. I use a very light hand and I just start scribbling and I make sure to leave open the dig dig sketch of course. I'm drawing around it and being very careful to not go over my sketch line. And I just use circular motions to put this layer down. The paper I use is pastel mat. It is about 9 by 12 inches and I'm working on the color brown. I really like to use brown. It is a very basic color and yeah, very easy to work on, very neutral. So that's definitely one of my favorite undertones to work on. So. I, I do copy a reference photo. I found the royalty free reference photo on Pixabay and I will link it below so you can find it and try it yourself if you want to. So I map out the colors I see on the reference, started with the darkest green and then I added the lighter green on top just on the areas where I could see some lighter patches. So I added this bit of cadmium yellow to the background as well. So I'm doing this very roughly as you can see. I'm not working very tidy here because it's just a base layer and I will be able to add many layers on top later. And I didn't finish the background all at once. So I just divided the background in sections. I started off with the left side and then I decided to move on to um, drawing the dig dig. And then when that was finished, I finished the right side of the background. So I'm really um, working from left to right so that I don't smudge anything. This way you get the cleanest result. So after putting down the first layer of soft pastels, I blended it out with my finger and then I started adding the pastel pencil. So here I'm using number 585. It's the darkest green from the set. And I'm just adding that on top of the dark green I put in with the coin or soft pastels just to blend it out a bit to make it a bit smoother so you want this bulky background to look very smooth you don't want any stripes in it or any um, weird textures it has to be as smooth as possible 
And then for some variation in the color, I added some darker brown. So I also wanted to prevent the background from looking too green. So um, that is quite important. If you're using only greens, it might look fake because the background is mostly grass and trees. Although you can't see it, you can't see any detail. It's mostly grass and trees. Grass and trees contain of many different colors and not only green. So I decided to add browns, to add yellows and a bit of black as well later on. And that way you get quite a bit of variation in that color. So I'm still continuing with using that green. I'm also tidying up the sketch lines a bit. And then I started adding the lighter green. So that is number 570. It's the lightest green from the set. I used a set of 60 pencils, by the way. And I would recommend that for a drawing like this. Um, I use so many colors from that set. So I would recommend to get the set of 60 if you can afford it or uh, as many different individual pencils as you can for a wildlife piece like this. It's very important to have a lot of colors available, otherwise it's very hard to get the same effect. So now I'm trying to recreate the shapes that I see on the reference photo. So with bulky backgrounds, you often see those kind of circular, um, circular shapes in the background. I'm trying to recreate those. Now I'm taking a beige color, a yellow beige. And I'm just very roughly putting those in. I didn't do any blending yet on this layer. I will be doing that later on. But I'm just filling in those shapes I see. Taking a brighter yellow here. So what I really liked about the reference photo that I used was the lighting. So it has a, it had a very warm kind of lighting to it kind of a magical feel and I try to recreate that in the background by using yellows. So now I'm blending out the second layer just with my finger. I don't use a lot of pressure yet when blending a first or second layer. I don't want to saturate the paper too soon. So now after blending I'll be able to add more layers as well. So you can see that you can get quite a quite nice effect pretty quickly already. So right now you could call it finished and move on. But I decided to add some more details to it. So now I'm using some black. I try to be very careful with black because it can make your drawing look very flat. So uh, I just use a little bit of black just to get some more contrast in there by blending all these colors together. The darker areas um, 
got a bit lighter. So by using the black I can darken up those areas a little bit more. Blending that out again. I'm using this minty color right here to put in some of those grass shapes because you could see a little bit of a grass shape in the background so you couldn't see the individual grasses but you could see a little bit of texture from grass so I tried to recreate that by using the mint and now I'm also using a bit of yellow And you can see by using the yellow you get a very warm effect, which was the kind of effect I was going for. So it's all a matter of layering. If you don't like a certain shape, you can just adjust it by adding more layers. So I just continue to layer down these colors until I get the right amount of con contrast and texture. Now I'm really trying to bring out those grass shapes by using this base. And then it was time to add some of the details that were a bit more on the foreground, still behind the dig dig dough, but a little bit more towards the foreground than the very blurriest areas, which we just put in. So there were some pieces of grass and some reed, and I'm going to draw that in now. So I'm working from background to foreground, starting with the blurriest areas and then adding the details on top. So I'm drawing in the stem of this grass with uh, this cadmium yellow. Just carefully freehanding that on top. If you make a mistake, you can very easily correct it. And then I'm using the light green on top of the yellow to tone down the yellow a bit. And then to blend it out, I just tap, um, I'm, t I'm tapping it out with my finger.
Okay, so now I drew in the stem and now it's time to draw some of these knobs on top. Not sure what you call that. Just using the beige for that. And then I'm also using some light pink. So when you have that green background, it's really nice to put in some variation by using pinks or blues. So I really liked using this pink. And I also have this Faber Castell Pitts pe pencil here. It's a very nice pink as well, a bit darker. I'm adding that on top. So if you don't own the, the Faber Castell Pitts, you can also use the pinks from the Stabilo set, but those are not light fast. So keep that in mind if you want to sell your art. For the pinkish tones, I like to switch over to the Faber Castell pencils because those are light fast. Correcting the shape of that stem a bit more with the dark green from the Stabilo set. And then adding some highlights with this beige color. And then this piece of grass was done. I did another one to the right, but it, it is the same, the same technique that I use for that. So I'm continuing to the right side of the background now because I don't want this video to be too long. So let's continue with finishing the right side. So I start off with this uh, green from the Koi Noor Soft Pastel set again. So what I find so nice about this background is that you have a lot of depth in there. So you have the very blurry areas and then the individual pieces of grass that you can see, which are a little bit more detailed, but not um, completely on the foreground yet. And then finally, there are a few pieces of grass that are um, very much towards the foreground, even in front of the dig dig, and that makes this background so nice so there's so much depth in there so just like i did with the with the left side i started with the darkest green and then the lightest green of soft pastels blended it out with my finger as you can see it looks very stripy right now so then i uh, moved on to using the pencils again and um, Edit that on top. So the color I'm using now is 575. It's the medium green from the Stabilo set. A really nice green, one of my favorites. And I'm adding that on top by using circular motions again, not pushing very hard yet because I still want to be able to draw the details on top. And then I switch to the lightest green. This is number 570. And with that, I filled in the center area of the background. So when you get very close to your sketch lines, be very careful with that. Try to keep your pencil sharp all the time. 
I use those very simple metal sharpeners. I have used the Derwent Super Point Manual Sharpener for a while, but that one got dull very quickly, so I couldn't use that anymore. So now I just continued using those very simple metal sharpeners from Faber Castell, which get dull pretty quickly too, but I just um, make sure to have a, a stash of those so I can always uh, use one if another one gets dull. Using some of that light yellow on top of the green to tone down that bright green a little bit. I don't want this to look like neon green because that would distract too much from the dick dick. So I tone down the green by using the yellow and some of that light beige as well. And then after putting in this layer, I blended it out with my finger. And then after blending out this second layer, I started adding some of the yellow again and I started putting in those uh, circular shapes that you see in bulky backgrounds a lot. I think bokeh backgrounds are very suitable for beginners. So if you are a beginner with pastels, don't be afraid to try this. It looks harder than it is. Um, you can get a really nice effect pretty quickly. And because you can add so many layers, especially on pastel mats, this is a nice technique to try out if you're just starting out. So I do recommend to use pastel mats because for me, it has been the best paper so far. I got so irritated when working on other papers. Other papers, I almost gave up on pastels completely. But um, pastel mat works so differently from Kenson Mitens, for instance. It's really worth trying. Adding a little bit of that dark brown now to create some contrast. And blending that out a bit. And then it was time to do the final details on top. So this is what um, gets the depth into the background. So the difference between the blurry areas and the detailed areas, there was a grass falling um, in a diagonal way towards the dictic, which I decided to put in because I thought it was a really nice change in direction between all the grasses here. So I drew that in with a light beige and then the light pink. Made that line a bit sharper by using some brown. And then to add some highlights to that, I used some white. So this is the only white I have used in the background. 
for the rest of the background I didn't use any white because white can make your drawing look flat as well so I tried to be careful with both black and white I tried to create the highlights and the contrast with other colors as much as possible and then only add white for the very brightest highlights So as I mentioned before, I do have the real-time tutorial of this whole drawing available on Patreon. So that one is 9 hours long. It's completely from start to finish narrated. So if you're interested in following that tutorial, it's available for $4 over on my Patreon. So feel free to join me on there if you're interested. I upload new tutorials every month and yeah. So this background, I think it took me about two, three hours in total. So I reduced this tutorial to about half an hour. Also adding some pink, as you can see. So the little bit of pink and purple that I used in this background makes so much of a difference. It makes the drawing a lot more interesting as well. And then some white for the very brightest highlights. And after that, the background was finished and actually the whole drawing was finished. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you want me to do more long tutorials like this. Because I don't upload um, videos as long as this one that often on my channel anymore so if you're interested in more tutorials like this let me know in the comments and i'll see you in the next video i will do a tutorial about the eye of this dick dick as well which i'll hopefully upload very soon so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one